Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I have two fabulous projects for you today. Um, one of them is a card, and the other one is a treat holder. And both of them um, are using the Party Puffins stamp set and the Give It a World dies. And I think you'll see in a moment why uh, you definitely need the Give It a World dies because they make um, these wheel cards really easy to make, really easy to make. Um, so they're, they're really fun. And uh, I'm so glad that some of you are joining me this morning. Um, so the first project um, is a um, action, oh, well, what I call an action card. I don't know what everyone else calls it, but um, there's fancy full cards and there's action cards. This card, I can't, I, I'll spin it um, when it's down, but there's a little wheel right here and you can spin the message on the inside right here. And the cool thing about this uh, die set is I actually moved the um, the wheel over on to this side normally right-handed people would have it over on the other side but I wanted my message down at the bottom so you can kind of switch it it can either be up top or it can be at the bottom and then this little window right here can be in different spots so that's kind of um, really cool um, and the other thing we're gonna make is a um, treat holder and you might recognize this one. I Let me grab the one I did. This one, I, I did a version of it a few months ago um, with a sweet ice cream uh, holder bundle. Now this one's a lot smaller and I had some people that wanted me to make a larger version so I thought this would be a good time. So you can see it's quite a bit bigger. And um, this one right here has um, a little window and I used the heart from that Give It A Whirl's die. So there's candy in there in a cellophane bag and I'm gonna show you how to and you get that window and get the cellophane bag in here. These uh, treat holder boxes are really cool because they're self-closing. And even though I have ribbon wrapped around here, when I squeeze this, the ribbon just goes around the edge and you can still get to the candy on the inside. There it is. So, and then it self closes. So I really like these particular treat holders. They take maybe just a little bit longer to make because you have to do some diagonal score lines. Um, but I'm going to give you guys on Saturday, those uh, people that subscribe to my email list, I'm going to be sending out a project sheet. And the project sheet has the supply list, a photo, directions with the measurements, links back to my blog and my video tutorial. So if you get lost, you'll be able to easily access back and a, a, a diagram on how to um, make make this so it will make it a lot easier for you and um, so hopefully you won't have any trouble making it because I think it is these boxes are really really cool and um, so cute Party Poffins is such a cute stamp set. Um, the Give It A World dies do not have a, they're not part of a bundle. They are a standalone die set. And um, they have some other little images in them like clouds and stars and, and hearts. And so they are very cool to match up with other stamp sets. And Party Poffins doesn't happen to have a die set with it. so. This one can kind of make your party puffins really stand out if you like them. All right, I have a few of you here already. And so I'm going to switch over and to my other camera. Please, if you have questions along the way, please ask them. Um, I'm always happy to answer them. And if you're watching this later as a recording, just give me a comment down below and I will try my best uh, to answer your questions. And if you like this channel, if you like watching me, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, and then there's a little notifications bell when you subscribe and you can choose how, how often you get notified. All right, let's switch over to my other camera. Let me scoot over here, put up my project sheet. And um, so let me just talk really quickly 
about the um, party puffins so right here this is the stamp set and I love that it has both images and words and you'll see in a moment why that's really cool with our little card that spins um, and I did a little altering of the greetings I actually cut them down the middle to fit my little window so you can definitely do that I'm going to be using the happy birthday in a row like this and I'm going to be using it on top of each other so you can see how I can use it for both uses then the give it a whirl dies so this part right here is what creates our base and it cuts a little hole so you don't even need a hole punch it cuts a little hole right there you don't need to figure out where to put the hole and it's just really easy so you cut the hole um, then the back part is this wheel right here and you know, again, you just um, cut, die cut this, and then um, you can kind of see three kind of shadow places. Um, this die kind of leaves a little bit of an impression, so you know exactly where to put your little images. Um, and then let me see what else. Oh, and then you'll need a window. So this little window here is kind of neat because when you um, line it up with the hole after you uh, cut the piece. Um, it, it just makes it really um, super easy to line it up. And the neat thing is this does not actually cut a hole. So um, if you're just a little teeny bit off, the window will still work, but you're not gonna cut an extra wide hole or anything, so it will still work. And you, we've got other little, um, uh, little things that will work as well. We've got this little um, guy right here and we've got a circle window and we've got a heart window so this is just really cool we've got clouds we've got stars you know so there's different ways to decorate this up and just a lot of different uses and it makes it just a little bit easier to make one of these cards because all the pieces are the the three pieces that you need to create that wheel card are all there for you all right I'm going to do the card first and then we will do the treat holder. So let me just set everything aside here. All right, we are going to need, we're going to do some cutting first. So I'm going to use a piece of designer series paper up top and I just forgot one little thing. Grab. So. I wanted to have two pieces um, because, and this is a good thing that I forgot that piece of paper. I'm gonna cut this piece twice because um, what I wanna do is I wanna back up this paper. This paper is a little bit thinner than cardstock and I prop this up on dimensionals and because of that, I don't want, like if you press down on the card, I don't want this to be super light and get indented. So I'm actually gonna cut it twice just so I have a more stable piece to put on the dimensionals. You could also um, use, if you're using regular cardstock, then you don't need two um, pieces of cardstock. I'm just using this as a, a thing to lift it up. Again, if you don't want to cut the extra piece and you think this light piece is just fine on top, you can do that too. I'm just kind of showing you what I would do to make it more stable if you want to do that. So let's grab this. And so this is the Brights Designer Series paper. It's got kind of uh, all the Brights colors and different patterns. And I'm using the Coastal Cabana one. And because this die has a square edge, I always put things on the diagonal to run them through. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of figure out how to make this kind of centered on there. And I've got my base platform, my number two adapter, uh, three, a clear plate, and then I'm gonna put another clear plate on top of here. And you know what I just realized? I need to shift it just a bit little bit so it's on top of the plate and I'm going to put this one on top and we're going to run it through and it goes through so much easier because it's on a diagonal okay so this right here 
this is number one. Normally, I think you would put it this way on the card, but I'm going to use it like this down here. Okay, then let's run through um, with a piece of just regular basic white. This is not the thick basic white, it's just regular basic white. And I'm gonna run it through right here. Right. and only do this if you want to if you feel it's necessary so the easiest way to get that window in there is if you glue these two together first so you kind of try and make them one piece so I'm just going to do that really quickly so I've got some Tombow here and I'm just going to glue these two pieces together and always like one side looks better than the other side like you can see the side has the stitching on it so make sure that that's facing the right way okay so now this designer series piece is a little bit thicker and it will be a little bit more stable then we're going to take our window, and I'm going to be using this window right here. And I'm going to just see this hole right here. That gets lined up with this hole right here. Okay. Oh. All right. And then just make sure your thumb grip right here is on this side and this is basically just kind of centered you just want it to be kind of so it the curve is right down at the bottom and then I'll take my next plate and I'm going to run this through and I'm going to have it come back because it's cutting through two layers of cardstock so I'm just going to go back and forth and you'll see, like, I was just even like a smidge off on the hole, but this hole doesn't recut. So it doesn't really matter, just as long as you're somewhat on the hole, it will work. And so there is our little window in our hole. So we've got that piece all ready to go. And then we're gonna cut our wheel. And the wheel needs about a three and three quarter inch square piece. Um, will fit that really well and I'm just using just regular basic white not the thick or anything and I'm gonna run this through and then I think we've got all the pieces that we need for the card okay so there is our wheel and that we're gonna stamp on next all right let's move this aside We'll move these pieces aside too. So let's have a look at our wheel right here. And we're gonna stamp some things on the wheel. We'll start off with happy birthday. And I've got happy birthday mounted on a C block here. And um, I just cut in between the happy and the birthday. There was enough space. And so I've stacked them on top of each other. And if you notice right here, on the wheel, I don't know if you can see, um, but it just leaves a slight little shadow in three pie sections. Hmm. I don't know if I can get it to show very well. Maybe if I turn this light on. I lied, I need my power bar on. <laughs> Let's see if that works right there. Okay, maybe you can see it a little bit better now. There's three little shadow pieces, so a little pie wedge that you can see. And so I'm going to have the rounded bottom, just like this rounded bottom is facing me, this rounded bottom is right here. So I'm going to take my happy birthday and I'm going to stamp it in that pie wedge. So it's very easy, you know where to put everything. So my wheel, this is one I did earlier, my wheel is spinning. So happy birthday, and then it's make a wish. Usually you roll down, 
is the most natural. So um, this is one I did earlier. So I just wanna make sure I have the images in the right direction. I want happy birthday. And then I want make a wish. And then the last thing is gonna be the cake. Cause I kind of think, you know, someone's telling you happy birthday. They're telling you to make a wish. And then you have to blow out the candles, which will be the last one of the images. So with the make a wish, let me ink this up so you can see it. I also cut in between um, the make and a. And so I'm just gonna come here, find my pie wedge and stamp down in there. So for this last one, the cake is a little large. And what I found when I did this, if you're gonna stamp it exactly like me, let me see if I can find the hole. If you stamp it all the way, you're gonna have a little bit of a shadow right here when you spin this around. So to keep the shadow from being there, I took a piece of computer paper and I took this die and I just ran it through with just this die. So now I have a place to put over my little wedge shape window. Okay, and then I can take my cake and I just maybe bring it just down just a little bit below the, the curve. So it will go right there. And then I want the top of the candles to be in the window. So I'm gonna be stamping a little bit off of that window. So you'll see there's my cake and the bottom of the cake plate is on here and not on my wheel. So that's, it's not a big deal if it's on your wheel, but I just thought to make everything look really kind of nicely done, I would do that. So let's keep rotating this and here's my cake. So I'm gonna just take uh, some pumpkin pie blends and just highlight the top of the cake. And then I'll take my pool party and the icing is going to be white, so the cake is going to be blue. I don't know if I would eat a blue cake, but I know puffins would eat a blue cake, right? Because um, they are creatures that live by the sea. So, you know, they definitely would have a blue cake. I think they would think this cake is great, especially if it had um, herring icing on it. <laughs> all right okay so we've got our our pieces kind of ready to go and you're going to need a brad for the sec uh for the center and these are our round and square brads so just choose any brad that you want i'm gonna follow my design and use a white brad but for this design a black one would work anything really would work and so if you're not familiar with brads, they've got those two legs. You stick this thing down the center and then you find your hole, you put them through, and then you're gonna split the legs right under here like this. All right, and then you've got the mechanism for your card. Like so easy, right? So very easy. That's like the hard part of the card. So now we'll want to decorate up this card. So I'm just going to take a piece of basic white and I'm going to grab some puffin images and just ink them up with my tuxedo black ink and stamp and party puffin. And I want a fish too because puffins eat fish. Oh, go look at some puffin images on your computer. Um, Google them. They are just the cutest critters. They can hold up to 10 little herring in their mouths um, because they've got, I think, little spikes on their, um, their tongue to be able to do that. It's incredible. They look hilarious when they've got that. Um, so I did go ahead and I, I stamped these earlier and I colored them and I cut them out because I thought you don't necessarily need 
me to do that. We don't have a die for the puffins, but they're fairly easy to cut out. Um, and then I have them ready. I just used um, a real red blends, pumpkin pie, a little bit of the um, smoky slate. And then on the hat, I use pool party and real red. Okay. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to wrap a little bit of this playful pets trim around the top just to give it a little bit of you know a nicer look so let's do that now and then we can use that kind of as a guide as to where to to put our um our images so i'm going to do a knot come here and make sure it's closer to the top not bring it over a little bit and then you know me I love my locking tweezers I'm just gonna tweeze these down and then I'll do my first loop and tie my little bow make sure it's pretty tight and then I can release this and tighten it up again I'm using the Playful Pets trim has two ribbons or two trims. So one is the grow grain and one is the baker's twine. So I use the grow grain on the treat holder and the baker's twine on the card. So that way you can use both of them up as you're making them. So then I'll just trim this just a little bit shorter. Okay. So now that I've got this on here, I can kind of decide how I'm going to put these little guys. And see the little puffin right there? He's holding holding the gift of a fish for um, the person who's, the puffins whose birthday it is today. So I'm not sure if he received the gift or if he's giving it to the bigger puffin, I don't know. But um, they're gonna have cake and they're going to have fish and uh, yeah it's just really cute so let's see okay just kind of anchor them on there and so look how cool that is it spins happy birthday make a wish and then there's the cake and then they have to blow that out all right, so now we wanna attach this to a card base. And so this is the card base. It I'm doing a tent fold here, 11 inches by four and a quarter, scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. And I wanna attach this with dimensionals. So let me grab my sheet. Still have a partial sheet here. So let's add some dimensionals to all four corners. That's always a good start for support. We don't want anything that's going to interfere with the wheel. I'm just making sure that dimensional is not over the top. Okay, so all four corners. Um, the wheel is here. Then we're going to put one here, one here, maybe another one up top. I want to support this. Okay, I'm doing a terrible job today and keeping these away from the edge. Okay, that's better. And one here. Okay, and I think that's about all that you really need to support this card because you don't want anything too close to here because you wanna be able to kind of lift this up and grab it on the other side and, and turn it. So about eight of those would be good to support the card. Remove all the backings. Okay. And then we'll just take this card base, just center it right on the card base. And when it looks good, you can press down like that. And then you just need to lift a little bit in here to get it to, um, to move. See? 
Happy birthday. Make a wish. And then blow out the candles. So isn't that cute? Let me just move that up just a little bit. So, so cute, right? Cute, cute birthday cards. So now we need a birthday gift for the person whose birthday it is. So we've got a cute card. Now we just need to make a cute little treat holder. And you know, you can put whatever you want on the inside, but I just thought the Swedish fish were just like hilarious. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. You are going to need a scoring board. You could also use your trimmer, but for this project, I think if you're gonna make a few of these, I think you'll be happier if you actually own a scoring board. So let me grab my piece. And I'm just using regular basic white cardstock. This isn't the heavy cardstock, but you could use the other cardstock as well. But this is just regular basic white. And this piece measures eight and a half by six and three quarters, okay? We'll put the six and three quarter inch side up at the top to start off with. And we're going to score at the two inch mark and the six inch mark. All right, so now just pay attention. I've got a skinny scored segment on this side and a wider one on this side. I want this wider one to go up at the top. So you'll see, let me see if I can get that score line to show for you. This wider one's up at the top and the skinny run will be down at the bottom, okay? Because we're gonna score this part next. So now we're going to score at the four inch mark and the eight inch mark. And then we're gonna score two more times, but this time we're only gonna score to the first score intersection right here, okay? So we're just scoring part way down. So next we're gonna score at the two inch mark and the six inch mark, okay? Just to that first score intersection. All right. That is the straight scoring we need to do. And now we need to do a little bit of diagonal scoring. Okay, so I've got my little diagram here. This is gonna help me a little bit when I do the scoring, okay? And then we're gonna have to do some cutting. So we're gonna take this piece right here I'm gonna put it like it is on my, my um, let's, let's put these both side by side so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I've got my stamp and pierce mat right here. It's a soft surface. So if you don't have a pierce mat, look for something that's maybe like a light foam or maybe a magazine. If you're using a magazine though, uh, make sure you cover it with computer paper because the colored print will um, sometimes rub off if you're using a stylus tool. This is my stylus tool from my Simply Scored. And um, one other thing I have is my um, Omni Grip Ruler. I love this for doing uh, freehand scoring because it's uh, got about a 1 8 inch depth. So I find it a little easier to use than just a regular ruler. But if all you have is a regular ruler, just use that. So I'm gonna start, um, you can see right here, this is my diagram, which will match up with this. I'm going to put my um, stylus tool right on this intersection right here. And then I'm gonna line it up with what will be up top here, not with um, the corner, but with this scored intersection right up here. So I'm gonna score like this. Put my stylus tool back here in the center and I'm gonna score right here. Let me see if you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so I've got to here and to that corner right there. Okay, I'm scoring to the score intersections rather than to the edge of the cardstock. Okay, and then just two more. Again, I'll put my uh, stylus tool, the big ball, right on that intersection 
which is right here. And then I'll put my ruler up to it and then line it up and score. And then again, the same score intersection and then just press it down. So you can kind of see what that looks like and this diagram will help you. Just note on this diagram, I've already cut off um, the, the top corners um, and this is kind of just the side tab that remains. Um, so that's kind of what it will look like afterwards. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna cut a little heart-shaped window right down here. But one thing that you just have to keep in mind is that this piece right here is six and three quarter inches and our width of our um, stamp and cut and emboss machine is only six inches, six-ish inches, but not definitely not three quarters of an inch wider. So all we need to do to get this through our stamp and cut emboss machine, see this skinny end up at the top? We're gonna fold it over. Yeah, just use your bone folder and fold it over. So now that's what it looks like. And now I'm gonna be able to get this through our embossing machine to create a little window. And I'm gonna do a little heart window, but you could do something else if you wanted to. So we're just going to put this down. It's the same sandwich as before, the number one plate, the number two plate, and the number three. And then I'm going to grab one of my hearts I'm not going to use the really big heart. I'm going to use this little kind of medium heart right here because I also want to do some stamping. And so I'm just going to kind of add this over here. I want it, there's the V right here. And so it's centered kind of down in this V shape, but it has to be in the V to kind of make that nice little window. So just carefully now put this on top so it doesn't shift. This is my plate number three. And I'm gonna roll this through. And let's have a look. Yep, there's my little window. You can see it's right in that V shape right there. Okay. That's all the die cutting we need to do on this project. And if you don't want a window in your project, you don't need to put a window in it. The reason I wanted a window in this one is so you could see in and see the cute little red gummy fish. But if you don't wanna see on the inside, you could just stamp something in this entire triangle and that would be fine too. All right, so I've got my little puffin right here. And this little guy kind of looks like he's looking down into the hole. Maybe he's ice fishing, right? For fish or something like that. So this line up top here, this is gonna be the top. So I need to be stamping in this triangular area. So let me just grab my puffin and come up in tuxedo black. And then we're just going to add him right there. Right. And then we'll take our little fish, because I think he needs a fish, and we'll add that fish right there. Okay. Oh, and one more thing before, since we have the black out anyway, let's go ahead and stamp this. So remember how I cut happy birthday apart? I'm going to take, this is a, an H block, and now I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm gonna patch them back together into the full length happy birthday because this is how it looked to begin with. It was together. So see right there, um, maybe my light's not so good, but it's all together now. So I've got the advantage of I can do a stacked happy birthday or I can do it all straight in one line. So now I'm gonna take my reading, oh, I'm stamping off camera. Let me move this over here. Uh, ink it up, and I wanna stamp it right above my puffins. Let me bend this back a bit so it's laying flat. And I'm just gonna stamp in between the two score lines. 
And there is my happy birthday, which will appear right at the top of my self-closing box. All right, so before I um, go ahead and do the rest of the box, I want to color these because it's very hard to color once the box is all together. So I'm going to use pumpkin pie. This is the dark on the feet. I looked up what puffins look like. So um, that's how I colored them basically is what after I looked at some images. Um, I just went ahead and this is um, smoky slate light just doing part of the beak and then the fish. It could have been a red fish like the goldfish in the um, or the Swedish fish, but I'm, I'm doing just a regular kind of a silver fish and then I'll do a red bow. And it's gonna look cool um, once I have the Swedish fish in the box because it kind of makes the, the heart shine red. Okay, I think I have done. Oh, you know what I can do still? I'm gonna decorate up these triangles because you see on the box right here, I've added a little paper. You don't have to add paper but it adds a little bit of something to your um, project. So to do that, you can kind of do it one of, of two ways. I like to take my, well, you can do your scoring tool or your, your trimmer. You can, let's just cut it. Let's, let's do it on the cutter and let's not even score it first is across the room right here but one thing I will do is I'm going to mark some corners on here so I remember which corners to do because see this image right here um, this is not going to matter so much with this particular paper but if you had a paper that was a stripe um, you would want those stripes to continue to go in the same direction. Uh, otherwise, it will be distracting to the eye. So I'm going to just mark down here with pencil these bottom corners. So I know that I'm cutting it diagonally in the right direction. So I just put a little pencil mark in either one of those corners. This square of designer series paper, it's Coastal Cabana out of the 6x6 um, Brights paper. And it's three and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. So a three and three quarter inch square. And I'm gonna line this up at the one and seven eighths inch mark. My um, two pencil marks are here and here. So I'm gonna cut down the center right here. All right. And then this corner right here is gonna come to the center right here. Probably should have marked the center part with a pencil too, but oh well. At least I know where my outer corners are. So then this one will be here. I'm gonna patch them back in a center. And then this one is gonna be diagonal to diagonal right here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take these inner two and they will come here. It won't matter if you, and then I'll take these two right here and twist them and then they'll be here and here. It won't matter for this particular pattern because it's a fairly even pattern, but just trust me, um, if you have a, a pattern that has a definite direction to it, then it might make a difference in terms of how this looks. Probably better to pick an overall easy pattern to begin with. That will make it easier for you. So I'm just taking these pieces and I'm going to just glue them onto the triangles. They should fit just inside each of the score lines. So when I was doing my box, I actually did this while the box was already um, finished. So, you know, you don't have to do it at the stage. You can do it later. Um, adding paper is not 
as hard to do uh, when the box is finished. What is hard to do is the stamping. So really, that's why it's kind of nice to do all of this right now because it's just easier to do. It's a little faster when everything's flat. Okay. But I kind of um, did go one step ahead <laughs> by putting the paper on here first. We need to do a few things before we get this box ready to um, be folded together. So down here at the bottom, we're going to cut in between these squares right here. So let's do that. Cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, cut. And then up top here, we're gonna cut just to the first score intersection. It's just a short cut right there. And then we're gonna cut away these corner squares on the side. They're actually rectangles. Cut away those two little skinny rectangles. Okay. And then we're going to um, taper this tab a bit. Because this is going to be adhered to this triangular shape and this is going to kind of bend right here, I'm going to do a very steep cut right here. So when this bends, it's, it's not going to interfere with the fold right here. Okay? And then this one will just be a little a little bit of a tab. Okay, so now this is ready to come together into being a box. We just need to fold along the score lines real quick. Okay, so these boxes are going to fold away like this. And then I'm going to use this and smooth it down. I'm going to fold this down. Make sure you don't fold that one at an angle. Down like that. Okay. And then this one will also get folded down on the angle. Just make sure at the bottom that you don't trap that square flap. And then one more time, this one gets folded down along the angle like that. Okay. So now we're going to do the side flap first. I'm just going to fold this over and put Tombow all the way along the side right here. And then I'm going to fold this over top and make sure it's lined up nicely and then press down sure that side flap is adhered really well especially up at the top because it's so so narrow and then we're going to um, put the bottom so it's up all of these square flaps and we'll put down that first square flap and put Tombow on it take the next one over put Tombow on it and as I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep everything square so it's a square shape at the bottom. And like this. And kind of keep it all square. And then I'm going to come up to the top and open it up. Then I'll use my bone folder. Or you can use something else. And I'm just going to kind of um, rub it a little bit so those layers really stick well together. Okay, so there's the box. So now we just need to um, fill it. All right, so yesterday I got some Swedish fish and since I can't wash my hands, I'm gonna use a glove and I'm gonna use our six by eight cellophane bags. I'm just going 
rub one right there. And I'll put in a glove. All right, so Swedish fish. We want about 10 of them. So let me grab this. These um, bags here are food safe, um, the cellophane bags, so you can definitely put food in them. Um, I think one more. And basically what I'm gonna do is line these guys up into a row. So they're, they're kind of all lined up, stacked. They don't all have to be facing the same direction, but they're all kind of lined up like that. And then I'm going to just fold in half the long way like that. And then I'm gonna fold this over, just push the air out, fold it over once and then twice. And so now I've got a nice um, looking bunch of fish that can fit right down into my box. And let's just shove this down into here. And it's because it's folded over, it's kind of sealed itself in. So you can see the redness, maybe not on my camera, but it looks like a red heart. So that's kind of cool. And then last but not least, I'm going to take some of this trim. And let's just kind of give myself enough so that I have enough to tie. And again, this is the Playful Pets trim and it comes with two rolls. Let me make sure this is straight along the back. It comes with two rolls. It comes with the black and white baker's twine and this um, skinny grow grain with a stitching down the center. So I'm going to pin that with my first knot and just grab my locking tweezers. Do my first loop. Come through. It's always fun to tie things on camera, right? You always feel like you have five thumbs. All right, so then I'm gonna release that and it's just gonna kind of be off to the side and then just trim this up just a bit like that. And there is the little box. Um, one cool thing with adding this um, trim, and I think I mentioned this earlier, is that you don't have to take off the ribbon to open the box. You just squeeze the sides and the ribbon um, just you know, fits nicely around the edge like that. So normally when you have a box and you're tying it up with ribbon, it just kind of seals the box and you have to open it up, but this one you don't have to do that. And as I said before, you saw how much candy I put in there in a cellophane bag. You can put whatever you want inside the cellophane bag. Um, but if you're using loose candy, you will, um, like that, you will probably want to put it in a food safe bag so that, um, you know, so first of all, it doesn't fall out. And then second of all, so it's kind of hygienic. Or um, if you have wrapped candy, like maybe you have um, saltwater taffy or something else that's in a wrapped candy, then you don't necessarily need a cellophane bag. Um, just keep in mind, this is an open hole. So, you know, you don't want anything that's too big um, or too small so it will fall through the hole. Or the other alternative, I guess, would be you could just cut yourself a heart and glue it on the front instead of having a window. I always like little windows that reveal though. They're kind of fun, right? So here we go. We've got two cute, cool projects, right? That would be a fun gift. 
Um, and don't just give these gifts to kids either, right? Some adults need some real cheering up and a smile. And I think this is kind of like, oh, this is a smile project, right? It, it, it will make someone smile if they get this, right? Even if they're 80 years old or if they're five years old, this will make someone smile, I'm sure. All right. Let me come back here and hopefully I didn't goof up too much with my dimensions and everything and I got everything right. I know I'm gonna double check my project sheet. So let's get back to your comments. Um, remember, all the supplies that I talked about today are on my blog and if you want to um, get any of them. I'd love it if you would purchase from me. I reward my customers. I always send them a thank you card every month um, and um, no matter the size of the order. But um, this is my host code for the month and if you use that and you spend $50 with me, you're going to get a pack, a half pack of the Ombre Specialty paper um, and that will be mailed out in July. You can also choose one of my super cute um, tutorials. This one's um, a Hershey's baseball cap and I have some paid tutorials um, that you can choose. Um, you can choose one of those tutorials for free when you purchase from me. So I really appreciate if you do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but let me get to your comments and your questions. Let me see if there's anything that I need to answer or clarify. Uh, good morning, Elian Burgit. Good morning. So good to see you. The wheel dies, Burgit, are fabulous. Like, look how quickly I put together that card. Normally, that would have taken a lot of thought, like where to put the hole. It's all done for you. And all you need to decide is where do you want your, your uh, thumb grip? I put mine down probably in the spot where uh, most people probably put it on the other side. It's turned around because most people are right-handed and they spin that way. Um, but I did it down here because I wanted my window down at the very bottom so that I would have room up at the top for my little images. But I could have had the cake up top too. So it's just really cool that all of those pieces come together really, really quickly. I love that. Hello, Linda. Uh, good morning, Cindy and Mary. Oh, um, Cindy, yes, my Omni Grip ruler is also a centering ruler, and I do use that too quite a bit. Um, it's a 12 inch ruler on um, one end of the top here. You can see the numbers zero and then one and one, so it's a centering ruler. And then on the bottom, it is um, just, it goes up to 12. Um, so yeah, this is a, a great little ruler. I've, I use it a lot now uh, for my crafting projects. And as I mentioned before, I probably have about 10 rulers. I love, love, love drafting supplies. So whenever I find something new and cool in the drafting arena, I will pick it up. Um, that, it's just, it's fun for me. I don't know why. I've never done anything in that realm before, but for paper crafting, for me, it just makes a lot of sense. Birgit, I'm wondering how the other windows for the wheel look, um, like with a kind of different um, shadow underneath. You know, this is the first one that I used, so yeah, it will probably, that, what, that window probably uses the space um, the best. So if we do other ones, and I'll try and do a, a different one in the future so we can kind of see, but what I would probably use is I would find the center point for that, that each of the windows, um, and then I would stamp in that area. So once you have the wheel and you have the window, you could kind of, let me grab my phone. Let me go back to my other camera. So with the other wheels, so this heart one, let me do it on the back. You can see a little bit of bleed through for my Stampin' Blends. With the heart one, you probably would want your window to be cut up at the top. It would look funny if your window was down at the bottom because your heart wouldn't be 
facing the right direction, but you'll have your heart one up at the top. And okay, so this is where I stamped happy birthday. So what you would probably do is um, you could take this, and since this is a scrap one, you could do this and just kind of give yourself a little pencil trace. Just make sure your, your circle is centered down here. And then you could, if you're just doing three, you could do, you know, another trace here. And then you would know, okay, this is my area um, that the window will show, right? Because it's going to be a little bit smaller than the other one. Um, and then the same for the, the other sizes. You know, you would just, um, I'm just using this as a template. The die is a template. Just do this. And, you know, so now I'm, I'm using, still using the pie shape to center it, but now that's a circle. And then um, this one, let's have a look how much space this one takes up. I'm going to go right through the cake here. And again, I'm still centering it right into that pie wedge. And the pencil mark um, is not quite the outside. So even if it touches the pencil mark, but that would be like the space that you would do. And I would probably just do like little pencil marks just to make sure that, you know, each of those things would fall inside of there. And that's how I would do that. You'd have to find um, images or things that will fit into, you know, three spaces at least right um so that that is how how i would kind of figure that out but hopefully i'll be able to do another video with um the different shapes and and just show you how um like a different design would look all right <laughs> ellie likes my gummy fish I went to the grocery store especially looking for something for my container just something fun Cindy, I'm so glad you like my project. Um, and Karen does too. Uh, Deborah likes the box with the Swedish fish. Um, and Birgit loves both projects. Um, uh, Kemato asks if I've made this box before. I have. I showed it at the beginning. You might have missed it when I hauled this up. This was my um, little box so you can see the size difference um, they're the two different sizes this one's quite a bit bigger it can hold quite a bit more but it's nice to have different sizes right and so this one you know has really kind of easy round measurements like two inches four inches six inches eight inches um, and it makes a you know a fair size box so um, and it works perfectly for the sizing of the party puffins and probably will work well for other images as well. Um, Loretta says, love the projects. Definitely Swedish fish and maybe goldfish. I didn't even think about goldfish. You're right, Loretta. Goldfish would work really well inside of there. But I guess I have a sweet tooth. So guess where my mind went? My mind went like, oh, good. I can sample the Swedish fish as I make the project. I like goldfish too though. That would be cool. They have so many neat flavors too, right? Like they have the pretzel fish, they have the um, uh, graham fish. Yeah, that would be really cool. I love that idea. Um, thank you, Cindy. You have a great weekend too. Um, uh, so all of you guys have a great weekend and um, watch for my project sheet which will be coming to your email inbox tomorrow. If you're not already on my email list, make sure you subscribe. Um, the link is down below and then you'll get that project sheet which will make it a little easier for you to make than re-watching my entire video. But then if you get stuck, you can always come right back here. All right, guys, have a great weekend, and I will see you back here on Tuesday and then on Friday again. Bye-bye.